All right, so I want to talk about some of the differences in results between a Mustang dyno and a dyno jet. So, of course, you always hear, oh, that dyno reads high or that dyno reads low. It's a, you know, horsepower killer or heartbreaker. You know, all these different sayings for different, you know, dynos that, uh, you know, various shops have. I have this comparison isn't because I was looking to make the comparison of one dyno versus another. But I had my car tuned on a Mustang dyno initially, and the tune just really wasn't that good. Once I was coming from deacceleration and I would step on the clutch, the car would lose its RPM and it would just shut down as I'm driving, as I'm rolling, and have to clutch, restart it. So it was kind of embarrassing. And it, you know, obviously shouldn't be stalling when you put your foot on the clutch. So that was an issue. Another issue was the tip in on the throttle was a little bit sketchy, it wasn't very smooth. And lastly, once the car warmed up, the uh, the warm start was actually okay, but it was the cold start. Cold start, it wouldn't really start. I had to give it a lot of throttle just to keep the, the engine running. So I wanted to get it retuned. I reached back out to the same shop that I got it tuned at. Uh, a couple days later, they said, yeah, you know, uh, give us a call back in a few weeks. We're really booked up right now, and, you know, we'll see what we can do. Now, meanwhile, you know, a few weeks, I wanted to have the car done and not wait that long. So there was another tuner who just tuned my brother's car, who is a, um, he's got a turbo Miata. And he tunes a lot of LS1s, uh, just LS series motors in general. And it turns out he actually used to work for the shop that I got my car tuned at. And he's been out on his own now for a couple of years and just been doing remote tuning and tuning in-house at other shops that don't have their own in-house tuner. So uh, this is all that he does uh, is tune cars. So I felt pretty good about it. He knew all the issues that I was having. It definitely sucked to have to pay twice to have the cartoon ultimately to run the way that I wanted it to run. But I felt that I needed to do that rather than bring it back to the same shop that didn't tune it that great the first time around. To bring it back there, you know, I just didn't really feel comfortable about it. It was a little bit fishy. I'm not sure what happened because I said I wanted to be there when they tuned the car. And they were like, oh, yeah, we, you know, we'll give you a call when we put it on. And I had a call. They called me and they're like, hey, the car's done. You come pick it up. So it's kind of like a weird red flag. Uh, from what I understand, maybe they don't tune everything in them themselves and don't have a tuner and they use an outside tuner. Uh, either remote in or they didn't get the outside tuner to remote in and they had someone less experience tune the car. That's the only thing I can think of. You know, this is a, uh, a reputable shop and they do a lot of high-end cars much nicer than, you know, my simple LS1, you know, 240, uh, dealing with all the newer Corvettes and Vipers and everything else. So, I don't know if they cut some corners. You know, I, I really don't want to disparage the company. Uh, however, you know, they, they didn't do a good job, uh, plain and simple. The tune wasn't smooth and it wasn't done correctly. Uh, so, you know, ultimately that's that. So on the Mustang Dyno, this is really the what we're all looking for here. The power that it put down, according to the first shop, was 376 wheel horsepower and 379 foot-pounds of torque. On the Dynojet, the Dynojet, now this is the same exact tune, so I got the baseline first. So that same tune ran on a Dynojet, made 367.8 horsepower and 358 foot-pounds of torque. So that's 376 on the Mustang, 367.8 on the Dynojet. And for the torque, it is 379 on the Mustang and 358.2 on the Dynojet. So the Mustang Dyno, in this case, it read higher numbers as compared to the Dynojet. Now there's a lot of variables, you know, of course, you know, the purpose of a dyno jet isn't to compare one against the other. And they work differently, a couple different ways. The, the Mustang dyno is a load cell dyno, right? So you have a couple of 
there's more variables with a Mustang dyno. You have some input factors when you have the car strapped onto the dyno. You'll input the weight, you'll input uh, sometimes horsepower at a certain speed, and say like 50 miles per hour, and the car will go on the rollers, and it's taking this into effect when it's measuring really the torque of the car on a Mustang dyno. So it's trying to simulate the actual weight of the car, how the car would drive on the road, and it's using these algorithms to generate the horsepower number uh, from the actual torque figure that it measures. Uh, ultimately, the dyno is a tool, so you start with your base tune, and then from there, you, you tune it, and you see how much power you made from where you started to where you end up, and that's really the, the purpose of the dyno, not just to you know, figure out how much wheel horsepower you made. Uh, although that, that's uh, the, the best part about it by far. Yeah, so whereas the Mustang dyno is a load cell dyno, the dyno jet is an inertia dyno. So the way that that measures horsepower is a little bit different. It takes a known mass, which is the weight of the rollers, and it's essentially measuring how fast you're spinning up these rollers to determine the uh, horsepower and torque of the car. So that's really going to be a constant no matter what car you put on there, if it's a light car, if it's a heavy car, none of that matters. It's just measuring how much and how fast those rollers are spinning. Uh, so one is not necessarily better than the other. The load cell dynos certainly have a lot more variables and the variables sometimes can make it so that the tuner themselves have a little more flexibility in how the numbers read in that particular dyno. So in this case, you know, it seems they're actually fairly close between the dyno jet and the Mustang dyno. Uh, not a huge difference between how one read it, although many people say the Mustang dynos read lower than the dyno jet. Again, it really comes down to the tuner. Same thing on a dyno jet, you can play around with the correction factor and that can have an impact. But, you know, for the most part, the dyno jets, you typically can't tweak them. From what I understand, you can't adjust them as much as you can on a Mustang dyno. Uh, but, however, the new tuner, he was able to uh, make some more power on the car and definitely made a run a lot nicer. So we went from that 367.8 baseline to 382 wheel horsepower and from 358.2 torque to 381 foot-pounds of torque at the rear wheels. So it's pretty nice. It's always nice to get a boost in horsepower, which is of course, you know, what I was looking for to get it retuned. Uh, but also the drivability of the car is a lot better. So it runs a lot smoother. And the tipping on the throttle is better. Uh, cold starts, warm starts, just really a better tune all around. Um, so yeah, that, that's the uh, the differences that I saw. Uh, these cars ran on a day that was almost the same exact temperature, literally maybe a week and a half apart. It was right around 80 degrees Fahrenheit, LS1, mild cam, you know, that's really it. Not a whole lot done. It does have built internals, forged internals, but that's not going to add any horsepower to the car. So that's it. <laughs>